So it's time to make another video about the equatorial mount because I'm still seeing numerous comments posted and statements made by flat earthers in videos claiming that the equatorial mount works fine on a flat earth. Now that is completely wrong. It cannot work on any flat earth and therefore flat earthers still don't understand the geometry of an equatorial mount. So anybody that has followed my channel for a while knows that I have numerous videos about the equatorial mount and this one was made in March 2017 where I demonstrate how you can build your own equatorial mount for under $50. I have other videos using Celestron mounts and Skywatcher mounts. This is actually one of my most popular videos, Flat Earth Can't Telescope, where I talk about the geometry of the polar alignment. I did a follow-up showing Flat Earthers how it works on a ball. I will link to all these videos in the description below. And this is another video that has been posted on my channel, which I will play at the end of this video. That gives you a nice visual demonstration of how the equatorial mount works on the Earth. So I'm happy to see that the topic of equatorial mounts is becoming more prevalent in flat Earth debates. And I have noted that Red's Rhetoric has asked several flat earthers to demonstrate how the equatorial mount can work on a flat earth during the debates on the non sequitur show. Now, if you listen to the answers provided by the flat earthers when asked this question, it is immediately apparent that the flat earthers still don't understand the geometry of an equatorial mount because they give a word answer that clearly identifies they are not even understanding the problem that an equatorial mount creates for the flat earth. So let's revise the two main points of an equatorial mount that give us proof we are not living on a flat earth and irrefutable evidence that we live on a globe. The first one is the polar alignment and that is the act of orienting the mount correctly for your position on the earth. And secondly, once polar aligned, the equatorial mount can track objects moving across the sky with a single axis of rotation. Point one and point two together cannot work on any flat earth. It only works on the globe. Flat earthers, you cannot hide behind your misunderstanding of this forever. Let's take a look at an equatorial mount. Here we see a telescope fitted to a basic equatorial mount. There are two axes indicated here, the declination axis and the polar axis. And you can see the indication here is showing that the angle of the polar axis matches the latitude of the location of the telescope. And this is a key element of the polar alignment and it's the key point in the geometry of the equatorial mount that gives us the evidence of the globe. So when discussing this directly with flat earthers, I have seen the claim made that the equatorial mount presupposes the globe. Well, the equatorial mount has no idea by itself where it is on the earth. It is the manual act of polar aligning the mount that causes it to work, that allows it to track objects across the sky. So the mount itself is not presupposing the globe at all. By orienting the polar axis on the mount, based on our latitude and location on the earth, the geometry actually gives us the globe because it will not work. The equatorial mount by itself can do nothing unless it is correctly polar aligned. So we are matching it to reality. When we do that, we find that this polar axis matches our latitude perfectly. And it is that geometry that gives us the globe. So I'll just play a relevant portion of this clip that will show you the changing angle of the polar aligned axis on the equatorial mount matches latitude. And when it does that, it keeps the telescope pointing in the same direction for any latitude on the Earth. So your telescope can be used no matter where you are on the Northern Hemisphere and also the Southern Hemisphere. So 
So you could see very clearly as the mount moved from the North Pole to the equator and then down to the South Pole, the angle of the polar aligned axis was changing in direct proportion to the latitude. And by doing so, it maintained the telescope pointing in the same direction. And the next part of the proof is the ability to track objects through the sky using a single axis of rotation. And this is part of one of my earlier videos where I did a time lapse that ran for longer than 24 hours, just tracking my own equatorial mount as it was following the sun. Now you can see that as it's following the sun, it is rotating on one axis only. As the sun set, it gets dark. The mount continues tracking with that single axis of rotation. At midnight, over here in the bottom right is the timestamp. So you can see we're now reaching midnight and the telescope is pointing down through the earth. That is indicating the position of the sun as it continues to track at a steady 15 degrees per hour we will see that the sun rises and the continuing motion of the mount allows the telescope to meet the sun once again so it was able to track the sun all day with a single axis of rotation continue that rotation through the night and align with the sun the next morning again with one axis of rotation. So it is this single axis of rotation with the polar aligned axis that gives us the globe and will not work on any flat earth. Now when asked the question to show how the equatorial mount works on a flat earth they don't show us this at all they just tell us so what is the difference between show and tell? Well, I can tell you that I just got back from the ISS yesterday. It was a fabulous trip. The rocket ride was exciting. It was fun spinning around in zero gravity without any harnesses. But sorry, I forgot to take my camera. So I really can't show you anything. See the point? There is absolutely no point telling us the equatorial mount works on a flat earth if you can't show us how it works. Now in the past I have given flat earthers ample opportunity to actually show us how the equatorial mount works on a flat earth and they have repeatedly failed. In fact for the March equinox I presented a contest with a Mavic Pro drone as the first prize and a P900 as the second prize and even though they had three months and several reminders there was not one successful entry from a flat earther. Now, on the date of the equinox, I opened the contest to entries based on a globe and very quickly received numerous successful entries demonstrating that the equatorial mount works just perfectly on the globe. So once again, flat earthers, I'm posing the question, show us how it works on a flat earth using a physical model demonstrate to us how the equatorial mount correctly polar aligned for each latitude can track objects through the sky with a single axis of rotation from any point on the earth. Don't just tell us. It is pointless just telling us that it works. You need to show us how it works. If you can't do that, consider it a fail. And I know for a fact already that flat earthers will never be able to show us how it works on a flat earth because the geometry does not work on a flat earth. It cannot work on a flat earth. It only works on a globe. And therefore, the equatorial mount truly is a wooden stake through the heart of flat earth that kills it stone dead. So I generally don't spend a lot of time looking at flat earth channels, but I know a lot of you do. So let's Put the pressure on these flat earthers. Ask the question in every hangout, in every discussion, on every flat earth channel. Show us how the equatorial mount works on a flat earth. And they will come up empty handed every time. 
and the continued failure of flat earthers to show us how the equatorial amount works on a flat earth will be explained to them very clearly in the equinox challenge for September where the contest entries will show why the equatorial mount cannot work on a flat earth using physical models. And remember, the prize for that is a Nikon P1000. So once again, flat earthers still don't understand the geometry of an equatorial mount. I'm sorry flat earthers, but you cannot hide behind a lack of understanding forever. And the last part of this clip, I will once again play this short video which gives you an excellent visual explanation of how the equatorial mount works on the globe. The German equatorial mount was invented by Joseph von Fraunhofer. Equatorial mounts are used in astronomy. Its function is to cancel out Earth's rotation and pointing at celestial objects while carrying a telescope. The Earth turns around in 23 hours 56 minutes and 4.0989 seconds. This is called a sidereal day. The mount has four axes. Azimuth is for keeping your mount parallel with Earth's rotation axis. And altitude for adjusting your latitude on Earth. So your telescope can be used, no matter where you are. On the Northern Hemisphere, and also the Southern Hemisphere. So if you are like me in the Netherlands, roughly on 52 degree latitude, you put the altitude at 52 degree, pointing to magnetic north. A program like Polar Finder shows the current position of Polaris. Now using the Polar Scope we can adjust for true Northern Celestial Pole. Turn the right ascension so, that the Polaris marking is on the correct place. And adjust altitude and azimuth to center Polaris in the circle. The declination axis is for pointing at the stars. Right ascension is for compensating Earth's rotation and pointing at stars. Now we point at an object in the sky. If we now start tracking, at sidereal rate, the object stays centered in your telescope. This can be done for hours, until the object disappears on the horizon. Thank you for watching.